those of you who come come to the uh, clinic are obviously familiar with the uh, the door um, and I thought I could tell you a little bit about what what goes on behind it um, and it, it's such a pleasure to be part of the lamb center team um, I do 10 hours a week uh, for lamb and it is sort of my favorite bit of my week really um, I thought I'd just tell you, it, it's ironic that I've ended up being the lamb, uh, a lamb nurse because uh, my first day that I started at Queen's, um, it was a Tuesday and on a Tuesday lunchtime the doctors all have a little, um, go into the seminar room and do little presentations and things uh, about different subjects and uh, my the, the nurse who, who's sort of in charge of us, she said, oh, I'll take you in and introduce you. And uh, I sat there and all these eminent people coming in and I was thinking, oh my God, I, I, I don't know if I've done the right thing coming here. I'm never going to, you know, understand all this. And the topic of the day was lamb, Dr. Will Chang giving a talk on lamb. And uh, I just thought, oh God, I'm out of my depth. I'll, ne I'll never get to grips with this. Um, uh, and sort of felt like running off, but very glad that I didn't. So it's, it's just really strange that, you know, a few years later I, I end up here. Um, <laughs> so, right, let me try and move this forward. So just click. The, this slide sort of represents the, the, the clinical side of, of the role, so looking after the mon uh, monitoring um, of rapamycin, um, making sure you know we've got results, um, liaising sometimes with the transplant centres to make sure information and results have gone up there. Um, I have to keep looking at my little list. Um, you know, making sure we're stocked up with things, um, looking at inhalers, some, some people are on inhalers, so we can talk to them about that, nebulizers, all this sort of thing, health promotion, um, you know, leaflets and stuff like that that we put out. Um, and, and that's really sort of the, the, the bulk of the sort of clinical side of things. Um, my talk's going to be dead quick, you know. <laughs> um, I, I took a picture of, oh, sorry, on the, on the other bit, oxygen. That has been, that's a massive um, topic, really. And it has been, you know, really very good for me working with such a, a younger, a more active group of people because in the past I've always dealt with the more elderly people. Um, and... The, f the first time it brought it home to me, really, were, um, the sort of the difficulties uh, of, of oxygen was when um, I was asked to get some oxygen for a, um, a young um, lady who'd got children. And I never thought about it, ordered these cylinders and things. And, and she phoned me up a, a couple of weeks later and she said, I'm really struggling to push my buggy and carry these oxygen cylinders and I thought oh my god I cannot believe that I didn't think of that so I've become much more familiar with ordering like liquid oxygen the small flasks and this has, has been really to the benefit of many of the other patients that we look after in the other side of my job because I'm much more aware of you know the importance of of getting out and about and you know giving something heavy to someone who gets breathless is not not the best uh, thing um so uh yes that that is a a big uh, a big chunk of the the job um and it's also it's also been i mean patients have been very kind at sharing their experiences and as a respiratory nurse it's no big deal for us to see people on oxygen but if you're told that you're going to have to use oxygen I know it can be a, a huge have a huge impact you know on on people and the, you know people staring and all this side of things and it, it's been very good for me to be reminded of that you know it's not just an everyday thing that we're used to seeing uh, you know and you have to live with that um, in your everyday lives if you're on oxygen um, back to the tissues so the the box of tissues really sort of symbolizes um, sometimes the emotional support that need to give people and sometimes people come out very happy and relieved and 
perhaps want to, you know, shed a few tears. Um, sometimes it's quite distressing. I know when, when people first come to the, the centre and, you know, they don't know what, quite what to expect and you can sort of pick up that, that vibe in the waiting room. Some people want to chat to you, other people don't. They just wait to get in to, to see Professor Johnson and, and you know, find out what, what's going off. But I'm always there if, you know, just... If the door's shut, just tap on the door. Or I usually keep it open. You welcome any time, you know, to come in. If you just need, even just to sit somewhere out out of the way, it, you know, it's fine to do that. And uh, I also like this this picture because um, I realised when I first started, um, there was a lady having a consultation, and uh, she got a bit upset, and she was fumbling around looking for a tissue and obviously there weren't any so I thought well I need to get some and I like to pick the girliest box of tissues that I can possibly find to put on, on Professor Johnson's desk so I don't think he realised that so that, that gives me great delight um, this slide um, is another part of my role really I think is spreading the word about LAM um, and as a respiratory nurse I, I get invited to things this study days and I belong to um, an association of respiratory nurse specialists and uh, this was a conference that I went to in Lisbon I'm just showing off here and I just uh, you know I can't believe my my name was on this you know in this list um, and I just bask in their reflected glory really um, but the you know it, you do get chatting to people and often they are respiratory nurses that work in hospital and they will be the people that see patients that have come in with a pneumothorax and it's just a sort of prompt them that you know is could this be lamb perhaps just nudge you know the consultants or whoever's looking after them to sort to think well, you know have you considered that this might be something else and uh, you know to make sure they're followed up correctly um, and also just um, talking amongst colleagues um, you know to let them know there is such a thing as, as LAM because a lot of people even respiratory nurses don't know you know very much about it so um, I thought you know that is that is part of my role I have um, given talks to groups of respiratory nurses and also at Queen's we do regular little updates on, on our respiratory ward um, because it would be awful if we'd got somebody on the respiratory ward at Queen's and they didn't know anything about LAM when we're the National Centre. So uh, that's, uh, that's that slide. Um, this slide, um, well, you probably don't realise, but although we do realise it, it, it's you know not it's sometimes a difficult thing when you come to clinic so we try to make it as friendly and be as approachable as possible um but janet and i have a bit of banter and rivalry going on with our neighbors in the endoscopy bit and uh, so we we um we like to have you know nice sort of displays and things and show off to them we um so this was uh, harvest time i think you came helen didn't you when i think a couple of weeks later it was still there with a bit of a shriveled up <laughs> carrot in it <laughs> but um yeah you know just the magazines and stuff like like that that uh, put out really just to try and make the environment um pleasant for you you know when you're attending um and they, we do have great fun with them. In fact, we found a couple of, you know, really cheap and nasty magazines in there the other day that we had to quickly remove. <laughs> and that gives me um, license at home to go buy in these magazines that I really like because I'm doing it for the Lamb Centre. Um, so really, that's my... I'm very quick, but... Uh, um, it is a great joy to, to work in the LAM Centre and it is so, so nice to work properly as partners with, with patients because I think, uh, you know, when you do your training, there's all this talk about working in partnership, but actually it's quite 
daunting to be a nurse when you're with a, such a very well-informed group because obviously when you start you know well you still probably know a lot more about lamb and you know what it's like to live with lamb so uh, and I found that I've really enjoyed that side of it and I think things like the monitoring booklet and um, it, it's been really good to get the input from from your side um, about that because I'm quite pleased with that monitoring booklet and the little cards and that's that sort of stuff so um, yes I'm so very glad that I never walked out on the first day <laughs> so that's it no questions though <laughs>